Ever since the dawn of civilization, people have wondered about the end. There's always been a sense of knowing that the world and its inhabitants are heading somewhere, but just where exactly is the subject of 10,000 different theories. Some believe there's a God in control of the future. Others are convinced man sorts out his own destiny. In the light of recent world events, we'd like you to consider with us some remarkable information. In the last year or two, there's been turmoil and upheaval in many countries, the like of which we haven't seen for centuries. Across the face of Europe, change at a pace that not even the boldest of observers could have predicted. When workers in Poland formed the Solidarity Movement in 1980, the communist Polish authorities gave the outward appearance of an impregnable fortress. Indeed, communism seemed bedded in across the breadth and length of the Iron Curtain. Iron regimes with a steely grip on power. But how remarkable was the change? Who would have guessed that come 1989, not only would Lech Wałęsa's counter-revolution have led to free and open elections, and a new government dominated by solidarity, but that the Polish fever would have started toppling other regimes within Eastern Bloc countries. It was a bewildering time, with change happening at a bewildering pace. From the ringing of bells in Czechoslovakia, to the lighting of candles in Bulgaria, to uprisings in Russia's own territories. And finally, in a bewildering flash flood of anger, the people of Romania, ousted and then executed President Nicolae Ceausescu, smashing communism's 44-year rule. The most enduring image of those dazzling days was the destruction of the war between West and East Berlin. It had literally been possible in those stunning few weeks in 1989 to go to bed and wake up to find that whole nations and their governments had changed. These developments, along with the fascinating changes happening in the Soviet Union under Mikhail Gorbachev and the recent tension in the Middle East, have got people talking about international events with a real level of interest. Not really since the end of the Second World War has there been such upheaval of nations. The trouble is, it's all happening so fast, it's hard to know who to believe. Even the experts seem to be bewildered by the speed of it all. The funny thing is, at a time like this, Many people start to remember things they've half heard or read years before. Things like ancient writings, things like Bible prophecy, stuff that people often tend to reject as either worthless or silly, but which now start to make a lot of sense. Take earthquakes, for instance. They're one phenomenon the Bible says to look out for by way of signposts about what it calls the last days. In answering his disciples' question, what will be the signs of the end of the age, Jesus said, there will be earthquakes in various places. So what are we looking out for? Lots of earthquakes? Or earthquakes in unexpected places? Well, both possibly, because both seem to be a feature of our times. Within the last year or two, 50,000 dead in Iran, a country that's been badly battered by quakes over the last 30 years. A massive 7.7 .7 shake in the Philippines. 400 dead, a region devastated. San Francisco, the world watched in horror the images of sudden death on a swaying bridge. And the shattered freeways which crushed victims in their cars. I've literally got a lot of dead bodies up there. You know, yeah, there's a, a lot of people alive. There's a lot of confusion up there. There's a lot of people in it. There's trap cars. They can't move or nothing like that. Not forgetting, of course, Soviet Armenia, 25,000 dead in 1988. And the statistics go on for the last 15 years. Mexico, Turkey. North Yemen, Italy, in some cases disasters so huge like China in 1976, the death toll of 240